I truly believe to enjoy your terriers, you've got to be a little bit a terrier yourself. Because if we don't declare our alpha position over our terriers, then they're going to run all over us. And before we get into our long-legged terriers, um, I feel that if you are working on a terrier, the moment you get them out of the kennel is make it or break it. If you go in and, and sweet talk and baby talk the terrier, you lost the game. And I think we all know what I'm talking about. So just be a terrier yourself. Don't be any more rough-handed or um, any more physical with the dog, but just assume that alpha position over ourselves. Forward, brush everything forward. If you know the top skull should be flat, brush that back so it's flat. You don't want to get waves in your top skull. Terriers need parallel lines in their, the bridge of their nose and their top skull should make parallel lines when they're, you're looking at them from the side. Pull your eyebrows forward. So as you're drying the rear, most of our bathing areas are warmer than our finishing areas, just for humidity reasons, and we're drying our, our back legs our beard that we pulled forward, our Karen's heads that we've brushed forward, our Westy heads we've brushed forward, they're beginning to dry in the way we want them to dry. Does that make sense to everybody? How much of the ear on a Wheaton should be clipped? Not everybody at once. <laughs> the whole thing shouldn't. From the break down. You know what I mean by when I say the ear break? Where it begins to fold here, down. You don't want to clipper the whole ear you leave a little bit of a tuft on the top of the ear and what that does is you need to blend that in with your top skull. So a lot of people ruin a carry head. You usually, you've heard people say, okay, the body looks wonderful, but now it's make it or break it. How many people have trouble setting in the pattern on the rear of the back leg? Don't know how far to go down the leg, not sure where it needs to be. If you can imagine putting your ring finger, your middle and your index on the top of the hock, more in let's say this area here from the top of your hock and putting three fingers here which is where that tendon is everybody knows that tendon I'm talking about the Achilles tendon you shouldn't see that Achilles tendon so where that tendon starts to come out from the leg is where we need to stop because if we take the coat off the tendon we've taken the line too low we've made the dog's rear legs look really skinny because everybody knows how thin that area is so we need to leave coat in there to give our lines and make sure we have parallel lines. So place three fingers. I had to do it for maybe a year or two because I kept taking my lines too low on my rear legs where I would have to come down the back leg and I would have to literally put my three fingers over that tendon to stop myself from going too low on the dog. So I would put my fingers there and I'd clip her down the back leg to my index finger and I knew where I was needed to be and then I would take thinning shears and slightly blend in my lines but really cautious that you don't come down too far. But on those dogs that the husband wants a course and the wife wants a soft, like I said, always listen to the wife, but if you're not one of those people, don't torture the dog. What I mean by that is every time that dog comes in, you're stripping it to the undercoat to satisfy the client. Don't put the dog through it. If we're going to strip to the undercoat every single time that dog comes into the salon, it's not fair to the dog. Take a clipper to it because that's what you're going to have. If they like it soft, you might as well clip it and it stays soft. But don't put through the dog of stripping it every six weeks to the undercoat when we shouldn't be because the dog's going to get irritated with it.